Bill, how'd you first get into speed? I, um... <clears throat> I forgot how I did. See, that's the thing. It's a complicated story, how I first got into it. What did it do for you? What did it do for me? It, um... It made me, uh... It got me into a state of delirium, you might say. In a, you might say. How do you feel about speed? Should people take speed? Uh, no. I don't believe so. If they value their, uh, their life. What's it like when you're on speed? It's groovy. All right, busy. Mm -hmm. It's like sitting in a still room or with nothing to do. It drives you crazy. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Just leave me alone! Come on, you can do it. All right, the doctor will be right here. That's it. That's it. The doctor will be right here. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Perfectly all right. This man exhibits a very common reaction seen with high dose amphetamine abuse. He is anxious, agitated, disturbed, and acutely frightened. Here at the Haight-Ashbury Medical Clinic, we see many other reactions associated with compulsive use of infants. During the prolonged high, the patient may inject the drug one to ten times a day over a period of three to four days, never eating, never sleeping, always on the go. After this prolonged high, he crashes. After he sleeps for 24 to 48 hours, he awakes and eats ravenously. But after his food and sleep deprivation needs are met, rather than returning to a normal level of psychological functioning, he enters into a prolonged phase of depression. This depression is so severe that the patient often shoots up again with amphetamine and starts on another speed cycle. We talk mostly about methamphetamine or speed because that's the most widely abused street drug. But what we're actually discussing is a group of drugs, the amphetamines, that include not only methamphetamine or speed, but many other drugs that are used in, in medicine. And so I went back to the doctor and he gave me amphetamines, uh, prescribing two tablets a day for depression when necessary. Well, I, I started and it did help, but I kept having to increase the dosage because it seemed not to work as well after a few months of use. And I could, I could call up and get the prescri prescription filled whenever I wanted to. And uh, then I started having trouble sleeping because I was increasing the dosage. Then they started giving me something to make me sleep. And it became just a vicious uh, cycle of something to stimulate me in the daytime and something to put me to sleep at night. Now, to understand what these drugs do, uh, you can perhaps think of what happens to you when you're frightened or enraged or angered and your own body liberates adrenaline or epinephrine uh, and you become uh, ready for, as uh, many physiologists think of it, fight or flight. Uh, you're alert, indeed you're tremulous, your blood pressure is elevated and your heart pounds. Now the drugs we're talking about do very much the same thing. In fact, they act in the body through these uh, uh, adrenaline-like compounds that the body makes. The amphetamines do have legitimate medical uses. They're used in the treatment of some hyperkinetic children in a very rare disease called narcolepsy, and in certain special situations where alertness and relief of fatigue is, is uh, a proper indication. But their primary use is in weight control to suppress the appetite. Now, if these drugs are used continuously for two or three weeks, this, this uh, effect is lost. Nevertheless, many people continue to take these drugs almost habitually, even after any effect is gone, because they enjoy the euphoria, the mild stimulation that they get. 
Now, people who use the drugs this way by mouth uh, are subject to, to abuse of the drug. That is, they may become compulsive oral users of amphetamine. The problem of methamphetamine abuse is not new, of course. Uh, we've had uh, examples of, of abuse of this drug in ordinary practices of medicine for a good many years. The classic example, of course, is the housewife who seeks help from her doctor to lose weight, and he will prescribe very oftentimes, and has in the past, prescribed large quantities of some methamphetamine derivative. Now, the, uh, the use of amphetamines by truck drivers and by people who are forced to work at a monotonous job for long periods of time is well known. Uh, I've also seen patients who have developed large or tolerances and can take very large doses of oral amphetamines. It is a problem to get them away from the drug. Discontinuing them abruptly uh, is in some cases uh, very dangerous. In other cases, uh, you do induce a, uh, a moderate to mild state of depression, and uh, this is uh, very uncomfortable for the patient. So I, I got off of them. Uh, it took a little while, though it was terribly hard, because I went into a greater depression after being off. And um, so it, I, I did make it all right. I started losing weight, and I wasn't sleeping, and I was becoming terribly irritable, and I wasn't myself at all as a drug for the treatment of mild depressive states or for appetite suppression, I do believe that the risks far outweigh the benefits. It is my personal belief that, uh, that we could do very nicely without methamphetamines at all in the practice of, of uh, legitimate medicine. I think my mother, um, when she found out I was using speed, it hurt her because uh, John, my other brother, and Philip, my older brother, had used speed too. My friends didn't want to have anything to do with me or any part of what I was doing. And so consequently, I was associating with hard people, um, mostly people that didn't go to school, just bummed around. I'd taken speed just, uh, before test, and um, I had more confidence in myself for taking the test, but usually it would turn out an F, or I was just too jumpy, too nervous. And my mind was mo wandering off to different things. I started using speed about last uh, February. I started dropping speed. And I started meeting these new friends and I started hitting the speed. And my girlfriend, my new girlfriend at that time gave me my first hit of speed. And the people that I hung around with then, uh, they all liked speed and we all did a lot of speed then. We had one of the, my friends was a dealer and he'd bring ounces at a time and we'd hit that. And I used to hit about uh, once a week or sometimes twice a week. And I continued all during the summer using speed. We all did. And something happened, and a friend of mine almost died from speed. Yeah. He overamped, and, you know, he couldn't breathe. And his heart was just going at a rapid rate. And so that scared a lot of us. And we all quit speed, but then some started again. It is my feeling that every high school has its colony of kids who are still active students, but who are so far along into the abuse pattern uh, that they are destined, certainly, to wind up in a place like the Haight-Ashbury. A speed user does not function in his, in his social environment very long. The home is the last place where he can function. In our experience, there seems to be no particular type of individual who gets involved in the, in the speed scene. And speed users range all the way from ghetto people to, um, to very upper class individuals. I would say that perhaps the majority of, of kids who are down here in the Haight-Ashbury using speed come from middle class backgrounds. Uh, one of the things that we've been interested in, in looking at is the whole lifestyle of people who become involved in the drug and the kinds of things that they have to go through in order to buy the drug. Uh, on the lower levels, uh, we have such things as, as working the meat rack or 
Uh, for boys, uh, they might uh, cater to, to male homosexuals. A girl may uh, occasionally turn a trick or, or prostitute herself. Uh, some of the lower level uh, speed users will attempt to maintain their habit by dealing small quantities of speed directly on the street. This is perhaps the most hazardous way of supporting a habit. Uh, many very successful hustlers have begun to, to cash script or write script, uh, which is to say that they, they forge a doctor's prescriptions and, and buy barbiturates and, uh, and amphetamines uh, in drugstores and, and sell them. And there's a real market uh, in any speed culture for any drug which is a downer, that is to say a barbiturate or an opiate like heroin or morphine. Melody, tell me about the first time you shot speed. Well, the first time I shot speed was with an older man who had turned me onto it without telling me what it was or what it did, except that it would make me feel good for going into the drugstore for him to cash a script. And he never told me the risks involved, and because I was very, very naive, I thought everything was fine. How old were you? I was 20 years old. Then. What are the risks involved? The risk involved is death with speed. And inevitably, the result will be death. Are you still shooting speed? Yes, I'm still shooting speed. What's the come down like? A come down is, as I said before, is, is I can't find a word to describe a bad come down on speed. Well, it's very, very painful. It's the feeling where there just is no strength left to do anything, even if you want to, and you know you should. You could just lay there and die if nobody, if there weren't somebody, somebody around to help you sometimes. How often do you shoot up? Three and four times a day. Every day? Every day. What do you use to come down? When I come down, what I use to come down, if I have it, I barbiturates and heroin. In addition, prolonged use of the amphetamines produces very serious physical problems. The injection of amphetamine produces hepatitis. One sees abscesses at the injection site. In addition, malnutrition, skin problems, and a whole variety of other very serious physical problems. In general, the physical and psychiatric damage done by compulsive use of amphetamines is much greater than that with marijuana and LSD put together. Well, I shoot speed, I've shoot speed lately, doing concentrate solutions to the point where it's like boiling lead going up your arm and your head explodes into like an oversized warm balloon. You, you nod for a few minutes from overstimulation, you're wired for three days. And you dig, go around digging through trash cans and other people's belongings and things like that, you know. And, uh, it's just a heavy involvement in unreality. <laughs> Now, right now, I'm loaded on uh, two kinds, uh, three, actually, three different kinds of speed. Heroin, LSD, psilocybin weed, uh, something, oh, yes, and a few barbiturates. That's in the I went on a bender last night and today. Couldn't even tell you what day it is. What's the worst part of speed? Worst part of it? Hmm. Well, it's hard to say. The worst part of it would probably be... Uh, all the hang-ups and, and, and uh, hassles of, uh, of, an, of a functioning without any real sense of actual time and never being able to rely on anyone because they're always hung up too. And inconsistency of life as such. And of course, all those paranoid trips and everything are kind of a bummer too. In addition to the anxiety reaction seen during the prolonged high, we often see and amphetamine psychosis, characterized by auditory and visual hallucinations in which the individual hears and sees things, paranoia in which he may feel that people in his environment are threatening to hurt him, and it's this paranoia that 
produces a great deal of violence. Oh, I shot. Yeah, hey, come on. Man. What are you doing? We've studied the effects of amphetamine on mice. At high dosages, amphetamine produces death by convulsion. However, at lower dosages, when the mice are in groups, death also can result in many of the animals, primarily because they become violent, aggressive, fight, inflict wounds, and literally kill each other. Normally, mice get along quite well in group situations. Almost no other drug produces this violent interaction. Drugs are not uh, taken just in uh, the teenage slum or hirsute ghetto like the Haight-Ashbury. Come on now. Drugs are being used everywhere in the country. Uh, the hepatitis, the dirty needle, uh, the chemical effect on the liver itself, the, the brain damage, the weight loss, the bad gums, the skin abscesses, on and on and on. Speed kills, all right, but it doesn't do it very fast, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, agony and pain in the process. 